Hi, this is Olivier Blanchard with The Futurum Group, and I'm here with John Siegel, SVP Products Marketing with Dell. Thanks for joining us today and being in the chair. It's great to be here. Yeah, yeah, so there's a lot of exciting stuff happening. There uh, is. So I thought I'd ask you a few questions. Yeah, let's and do it. And obviously we're gonna start with AI. Why not? Why not? Uh, <laughs> if, if, I don't know if you've heard of it. Um, so let, let me just read the question. AI adoption is a hot topic. Uh, and the reason I'm asking, I'm reading the question is because it's in three parts. So part one, what do you see with customers? Like how are they interacting with, with AI now? Yeah. Uh, and then the follow up, I guess, is, is what kinds of conversations are you having with them about AI? Yeah, that's great. Those are all great questions. Um, AI is definitely the, the cool kid at the playground, as we've seen and you know from yeah. your research as well. Um, and uh, I mean, it's, it's the hottest thing going right now. I mean, literally, right? It, there's not a single industry that's not touched by this. There's not a single, you know, functional area that's not touched by right. this in any, any company. Um, it is, um, it's everywhere, it's transforming industries um, and it's making us all think differently uh, about our roles. Um, so it's a really, really exciting space. Um, and also what, you know, what we're hearing from customers uh, more than anything else is they're, they're all over the journey. Some of them are just getting started with AI. Some of them are, you know, at least in the middle innings, if you will, of, of deploying. Uh, but the vast majority are really at that early stage um, and, uh, and just trying to figure out what's next, you know. And so we've been really hard to work trying to help those customers um, get the most out of AI um, and help them ensure that they can help them accelerate, you know, get whatever outcomes they want to get out of it, as you know. Um, and that's, that's one of our biggest focus areas. Another thing we hear you know, in the conversations with customers is they're, also, they're trying to figure out, like, which models to use? How do I get started? Um, where do I run AI? Um, and one thing we're committed to at, at Dell is helping our customers run AI wherever it makes the most sense. Could be in the data center, could be in the cloud, could be hybrid, uh, could be um, on device at the edge. Um, you know, we're committed to that, and we're really committed to helping our customers. You know, simplify that. World. Right. And that's where the AI factory comes in. I think you're you're probably familiar I'm, with that. I'm, we're going to circle back to that. You're going to go back yeah. to that, but yeah, but those are a lot of our a lot of our conversations now are really, I would say, on the early side of it, um, helping our customers figure out where they should go and. A lot of the, the use cases right now, in the cloud anyway, in the data center, are really more focused around training. Right. But what we expect to see more and more now is AI use cases moving more towards the inferencing side. Um, and with inferencing comes edge, because that's, you know, you want to move, you want to move inferencing to as close to the data as possible. And um, that's where the AI PC comes in. Uh, it's, it's really well positioned to help our customers um, and, and, uh, and others in the, in the industry embrace AI and make sure that they can actually apply AI to their data. Right. And we've, we've noticed a trend, at least in the last year, we, we're noticing that um, uh, the models are becoming a lot more efficient. And so a lot of the models that were running in the cloud last year right. are already starting to run on device. And right. some of the ones that are running in the cloud this year will run on device next year, which actually kind of leads me to my next question. So on this, this adoption uh, journey for AI yeah. and this hybrid model that started with cloud and moving to the edge, moving to devices. What is Dell doing specifically to accelerate adoption of AI on device and also to drive innovation on the NPU specifically? Yeah, no, it's a great question. I mean, so one of the announcements this week with Dell Pro AI Studio, and really the, where this came from was exactly where you just were, was customers coming to us uh, saying, you know, what can I run on the NPU? Um, and Right now, there are just so many opportunities. The NPU is a very efficient, very powerful, you know, if you will, cost-effective um, compute, if you will, uh, on device. Um, and but what ISVs and enterprises and SIs are trying to figure out first and foremost is, you know, how to make it simple. Um, and so, it's a complex process, as you know, yeah. like trying to figure out what model to use. There's so many models; they're changing all the time. Uh, where do you what what silicon is that mo those models run on? What type of NPU or is it a GPU? Um, wait, if I write it once, could, is it going to run on this silicon but not that silicon? Um, so our, our and, and that can take months. Um, you know, we, we find on average it can take up to six months um, to you know from, if you will, de you know, developing 
uh, to actually deploying a new AI application on a, on a PC, uh, on AI PCs, on device. Uh, and so our goal is to really shrink that with the, with the uh, Dell Pro AI Studio uh, and really help our customers accelerate that, that whole process. And that means helping them, for example, pick a model up at the, at the start, you know, using, for example, um, leveraging our relationship with Hugging Face, you know, picking a, uh, an open source model uh, that's going to fit the criteria. Right. Um, and then also, as you were mentioning earlier, this could be a hybrid, you know, uh, deployment. Um, so we're also about helping our customers figure out where this should run. It could be in a hybrid, a hybrid world. So, if, you know, based on their outcome, we first ask them, what are they trying to achieve? And from that, we will work with either SIs or enterprises, et cetera, to help figure out the right model, how to build that AI application, build it once, deploy it, and then it can run anywhere. Right, and that's additive, right? It's not an either or, you're not competing against other products. It's Correct. basically like what they're already using, you just add this on top of it. That's right. right. I mean, look, we're, we, we're taking this leadership role in the industry yeah. more than anything else uh, to, to help our customers um, and partners. Um, and we feel like this is what's needed. There's a lot of promise, a lot of um, fascination with what AI could do on device. Um, again, whether it's productivity, security, creativity, there's so many different ideas. And what we want to do is really help facilitate that. Um, and the way to do that, uh, we thought, was with this the studio concept, right. which is a toolkit, essentially, um, where we can help you know, develop it once, run it anywhere, uh, and that ultimately, we hope, will simplify and accelerate adoption on device. Yep. So you, you jumped ahead to my next question. Oh. <laughs> so I don't need to ask it anymore. I do that. However, how, yes, you do. Uh, you read my mind. But um, just to, to kind of close the, the the loop on this, is there anything, I mean, other than it's the uniqueness that we've already talked about, is there anything that sets it apart from other solutions like this that might pop up in the market uh, or that are already out in the market? Anything like specific differentiators that, that we should know about? I mean, look, I mean, there's a lot of things we're really proud of. Um, when it comes to our AI PCs. Um, and you know, with the announcements this week, we're first making sure that we have a broad set of options for our customers. Um, we pride ourselves in the best durability um, and customers expect quality. Um, we have the most secure, most you know, uh, easiest to manage PCs in the market. We continue to have those. Sustainability continues to be a real uh, big focus for us. We have a number of announcements there as well. Um, you know, we are, we are committed to continued innovation in the space um, and giving our customers, you know, again, the, the best choice possible. Um, and, but to us, it's not just about the PCs themselves. It's also about the whole, in, the whole if you will, um, experience. Right. So with the PCs, oftentimes you're going to have peripherals uh, and displays. And so another part of our announcement this week was also ensuring uh, and helping our customers have a good experience across the desk, as we call it. Um, you know, so from you know from the from the cameras to the um, to the keyboards, uh, to the displays, to the PC, uh, providing the IT manager a simple way to configure and manage a, and optimize for AI. Because um, we know a lot of AI applications really benefit from you know fr from the peripherals, right. um, and so that's another thing that we're doing as well. So we're really about improving the, the customer experience overall. Um, and, and with you know, our investment um, in this Dell Pro AI Studio, which is not, no charge to our customers, it's a commitment from us uh, to help them you know, simplify adoption. Right. And that was a surprise when I found out because I thought you would you know, monetize that because you could just choose not to, which is, which is nice. Um, so we're, what we're really talking about is, is more distributed uh, AI than it is, high, I mean, it's hybrid. We talk about hybrid AI, basically mm -hmm. pocket to cloud or cloud to device. Um, but it's more about a distribution model of where you actually, where the best places are to run AI for whatever mm -hmm. whatever your resources are. So that's that's really helpful. Any specific examples of, I hate to put you on the spot, any, any use cases or examples that uh, sort of like customer zero type uh, use cases that you come to mind? Well, just in general, I would just say, um, you know, AI PCs, Provides so many, you know, great, you know, capabilities. Um, I think you and I have actually talked about this a bit mm -hmm. in the past, and these are just much better PCs. So right off the bat, I mean, these things are—they're um, sleek, uh, they're high performance, they're energy efficient, 
Um, the battery life is unbelievable, yeah. 24 hours, if not more. I mean, we're talking full day battery life. So there's so many great, first of all, um, capabilities of these PCs. Not to mention it can also support AI workloads, as you yeah. mentioned. Um, some of the early you know, use cases and ideas we're starting to see are, um, for example, we've provided uh, AI PCs, uh, we've armed them with, uh, to Deloitte. Uh, to all, Deloitte has armed all their developers with AI PCs from Dell. Um, and one of the benefits there that they found right off the bat was that um, they don't need to be connected, you know, to the internet. Uh, that they actually, their developers could actually, could be just as efficient right. uh, without access there. If you take that a step further and, and, you know, I start to think about what we can do to help not just companies, but society in general. Think of like Doctors Without Borders. Um, if they can take an AI PC uh, and help, you know, help someone in need in a third world country. Um, and let's say that other person that they're helping doesn't speak the same language. You know, a translation on the spot using an AI PC is incredible. It's really fast, really efficient. You don't need access to the cloud. Um, and, you know, this, so this can really solve a lot of use cases, a lot of things that maybe, you know, we haven't even thought of. And that's what I think was so exciting about AI PCs and AI in general is that I think it's less about doing things more productive. I mean, that is nice. And, and certainly that will, we'll see that we're already seeing that 30, 40, 50% of productivity, depending on you know, your study. But I think it's about doing things that we can never do before. Right. And, and that's what to me is most exciting. And so that's an example of a use case there. Um, and then, you know, running rag models, um, locally is also uh, very, very, you know, offline rag models. Um, on your own data um, is is also something that um, I think is going to become like a personal productivity assistant right. for um, you know for users around the world. And uh, imagine taking AI, the power of AI, to, with your own data. That's it, it. Really doesn't do much if it doesn't know you, it doesn't know your data. But when you apply the two together, that's where um, big things are going to happen. Yeah. So I think that's to me that's what's most exciting. Okay, I like it. Um, actually, I like that you're not just focused on the productivity thing, because the yeah, it, it, sometimes you're just you're not going to be in an area where you have dependable connectivity. That's right. Uh, or where you want to connect at all, and it's it's nice to be able to have that um, that independence. Um, okay, switching gears for my my last question. Um, Windows 10 is saying goodbye. Uh, support is ending in October of next year, right? Um, so how, well, October 2025, in case yes, depending on when this airs. October of this year. <laughs> That's when right. clear. Yes. It is urgent. October 2025. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so you're right. So what is, is Dell specifically doing to help customers transition? Uh, you know, with AI PCs, but with with some of the, the solutions that we talked about, and some other ones that maybe we haven't talked about. Yeah, I mean, first and foremost, we're helping them understand what the implications are. Yeah. Um, with certainly with our existing customers. And just taking them through it, so we're we're spending a lot of time now with them, under, you know, so they can understand what are the implications of, you know, not getting any more security updates. Um, what are the implications of having outdated PCs that, you know, for example, might require you might end up get they might end up getting much more help help desk tickets. Um, support becomes more expensive, so we're, we're helping them through understanding the implications mm -hmm. of of this, and it's pretty urgent. Um, and you know, Microsoft really just just doubled down once again on the October fifteenth date to be really precise, um, twenty twenty five. And so we're just really helping them understand what the implications are and how to actually get there. The migration path to Windows eleven, the good news is is um, it's more seamless than other other previous uh, migrations from one generation to the next. And so we're already seeing really good promise here. Uh, we we've already transitioned. Um, some, but we still want to transition a lot more of our existing customers. And what we're finding is that we're able to transition them much more seamlessly, uh, 20, 30% faster than we were in the, the last generation. Um, and then on top of that, we have the most you know, secure, the most manageable PCs on top of that. So we're giving them the assurance, the confidence that um, they're investing you know, um, in the right vendor. And then you know, because this is happening, at the same time that AI PCs are emerging and the use cases are coming, we're also trying to help them understand why AI PC is the right answer. So that if they invest now, they have that investment protection so they can take full advantage um, you know, going forward. You know, the last thing you want to do is, is not being prepared. Right. Um, you know, 
an, an analogy that um, sometimes is, would you ever like run a you know, run a marathon? I, I ran the Boston Marathon earlier this year. I don't think I would have run it in flip flops. Like, that would be really tough. <laughs> yeah. Um, why not take advantage of having the best? You could do it, by the way. You could you could run the marathon with flip flops. Technically, it really painful. You'd be slow. Um, get a lot of blisters. Um, why not take advantage of you know having the latest and greatest running shoes, or at least decent ones. Um, and um, and that's why I kind of see the difference between non AI PCs and AI PCs is that you know at the end of the day, why not take full advantage? You know this AI is of course the marathon in this in this analogy, and I think. Um, it's coming. We know it's coming, and we just want to make sure they're well prepared for it. Right. Oh. No, that's really good. And the new nomenclature, the new, uh, uh, the way that you've you've re- rearranged the grid uh, of uh, a brand. Of the, the brand. Yeah. It's. Yeah. I think it's going to be really helpful as you're transitioning into AI, as they're transitioning into uh, AI PCs as well. That's right. Because it's basically a full reset of the category, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. Look, we, we it, you're talking about the um, our, our simplification, yeah. if you will, from a branding perspective, and and that. That came from uh, lots of conversations and studies, uh, detailed studies with thousands of customers and partners through you know all segments, um, and listening to them and understanding what was working and what wasn't, and um, and what we found more than anything else is what they cared about was the Dell brand, um, yeah. and what they wanted more than anything else is to be able to find the perfect device for them as simply as possible, um, and so that's what we tried to do uh, is make it much simpler for them. Yep. So we're excited about that, and we know we'll, we'll be taking um, a lot of our existing customers in, uh, through that journey. Um, a lot of those that haven't shopped with Dell, um, you know, I think they're going to find it really easy to work with us. Yeah, I think so. All right, cool. That's all the time we have for. Uh, so, John, thanks a lot for answering my questions. Um, I'm Olivia Blanchard with the Futurum Group. Join us again on our next video and uh, set of interviews. And until then, have a great day.